is the beginning of our system upgrade. We have a whole Tesla P85D battery pack here that we're going to disassemble today. So I'm just going to open it up and uh, start. Our first little high voltage sticker. First contact with some high voltage. Fuse is lifted. Hear Fuse. that? <laughs> so these are the, the bolts in a bolt. These are the alignment pins. So when you lift it into the car, uh, there's some uh, bolts that, some pins on the car side that will slot into here to align the battery pack. It's quite loose actually. Alignment. Why did you say that? Because Jehu said that. <laughs> I learned from Jehu. One tool we didn't have when we were disassembling the Nissan Leaf battery. I always wanted to try. I don't think this works. Nope. Yeah, according to what I know, these are just fitted in here. You actually, just. Modules. Look at that. So these are the internal coolant loops. So we couldn't actually find any hose that was big enough to fit over these main connectors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, use the EV West method and connect some smaller tubing up to this internal uh, coolant loop to drain the coolant. This is hard, man. This sealant is a lot worse than the stuff that we encountered with the Leaf. <laughs> Tesla grade. Uh oh, there we go. Oh, it's free. Oh, my God. Look at that. Full module. Next step, drain the coolant. Pointing to the camera. <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> huh? <laughs> All right, so we weren't actually sure what the size of connector this were. So we actually picked up uh, three different sizes of vinyl hose 
eight millimeter, seven millimeter, and six millimeter. Uh, I read online that this was a six millimeter, but it actually looks closer to a seven. Although this six seems to be fizzing. Actually, the six fits very well. If you're watching this and wondering how to take apart your own Tesla battery, these are six millimeter or seven, both would work. According to what I read online, it seems like there's about seven liters of coolant in here. This tank is about 18 liters. All right, so if I got this right, if I put some air in here, I should be able to drain the coolant. Damn it. Oh shit. Went all over in the cells. It didn't come off here. It came off here. As long as I lower the pressure. Actually, if I get the vice grips. All right. So we're actually on our last alignment bolt. And I realized that if you take this off, once you take it off, there's actually a hole that goes right through the entire battery. There we go. It goes right through. <laughs> These are where the alignment pin goes. So the modules are really just right there. You have to be careful when working around. I think if you just go like this, like just tilt it back and forth, it should come off. Okay, it's off. Go that side, lift it up. Yep. So let's just remove the micro sheets. Oh, it does. Oh, okay, there is a clip here. All right, so this looks like a standard Molex. So you would have to press in here for it to release. Okay. Make sure that no coolant gets out, just in case there is some that's still left in there. Seems pretty dry, actually, yeah. That is heavy. So I actually broke one of the connectors trying to figure out how this came out. Turns out that there's just this small pin in there. So all you have to do is use a screwdriver or something flat, press it in and lift it up.
We are done. Since the Synth BMS hasn't arrived yet, I can't actually install the Tesla modules yet. So I decided to switch out the inverter, the old Kotec for the new Victron MultiPlus. We also have to do some wiring here. I need to switch some stuff out. There's gonna be a box here, which will house the Synth BMS, getting the data lines from the Tesla modules under here and bringing them up behind the wall to communicate with the Synth BMS. I also have to um, remove this ANL fuse bank, replacing it with a single uh, bus bar because these breakers, which are in line for the fuses, they actually trip so fast when something goes wrong that these fuses don't actually have any time to blow and they just increase the resistance. So I'm just going to remove them. Also here, these smaller bus bars, I'm going to replace with better ones and also tidy up some of the wiring here. But today, the mission is the inverter. This is the AC side. So this is the main uh, AC circuit breaker box. So right now I have it wired up just with a socket. It's not very good, it's not hardwired. So it's a bit of a safety issue there. So I'm actually uh, prepared a new AC cable, which is tucked away there, which will go into the MultiPlus. So I need to actually change some of this out. But first thing, you shut everything down.